Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. The archaeological site of Por Bajin is situated on an island in Lake Tirkal in the Republic of Tuva in southern Siberia, very close to the border with Mongolia, and it's unlike anything I've seen before. The 1,300 year old fortress like structure still divides the experts as to what it actually was in its heyday. So, in this video, I'm going to take a closer look. The small island known as both Por Bajin and Por Bazin is almost completely covered by these ancient ruins, like towering square walls. It's apparently located in the very centre of Eurasia, on a lake high up in the mountains of southern Siberia. In the Tuvan language its name translates to Clay House. It was only discovered in the 18th century, before being first explored in the late 19th century. It's a site that I wasn't aware of until recently, and it fascinates and frustrates the experts in equal measure because there are differing opinions regarding who built it and why. Some people think it's a summer palace, some call it a monastery, others believe it's an astronomical observatory, and some believe it's a fortress. Its outer walls stand 10 meters high and 12 meters wide, being very fortress-like in appearance. The Russian archaeologist or antiquarian who first investigated it in 1891 noticed it had a similar layout to the former capital of the Uyghur Empire, known as Karabalgasan, and this empire ruled between the mid 8th and 9th centuries AD. 60 years after the first investigations, and another Russian archaeologist began excavating the island, and noted construction characteristics typical of Chinese architecture from the Tang Dynasty. After excavating part of the island, and on finding an inscription, the archaeologist believed that Por Bajin was a defensive fortress built by the second ruler of the Uyghur Empire, Boyan Cher, sometime around 750 AD. This very speculative interpretation became widely accepted for decades, but in 2007, large-scale fieldwork was undertaken by the Russian Academy of Sciences, Moscow State University and the State Oriental Museum. Clay figures, tiles, friezes and art have been discovered, faded coloured drawings on plastered walls, giant gates and fragments of burnt wood but still the experts were without answers as to the purpose of this incredible site, which does look typically Chinese. For example, the structures on the island employ the use of Chinese techniques of interlocking wooden brackets. Strangely, there was no evidence of a heating system and no signs of habitation. No traces of people actually living on the island for a long period of time. Radiocarbon dates came back to between 770 and 790 AD, which is 20 to 30 years too late for the second ruler of the Uyghur Empire, because Boyan Cher died in 759 AD. The date of construction is thought to be around 777 AD, and is therefore likely the work of his son Boyu Kargan, a man who made Manichaeism the new state religion. He could have commissioned the island to be a Manichaean monastery, but he died in 779 during the anti-Manichaeism revolt. Therefore, it is possible the island was a monastery dedicated to the new state religion, but was never completed because of the revolt, and this may well explain the lack of habitation. It simply never got finished and never got used. But this is just one interpretation of the archaeology, and still it's by no means conclusive. The lack of a heating system on an island exposed to the harsh Siberian climate, as shown here being covered in snow with the lake frozen over, together with a few signs of habitation, may also indicate that this was a seasonal home or palace. Some believe we're looking at the summer palace of Boyu Kargan, which was then converted into a Manichaean monastery soon after its initial construction, before being abandoned relatively quickly when the ruler died. Whatever this site was, here is an artist's impression of how it may have looked, 
And as we can see from this, as well as the ruins, almost the entire island was built on. Experts are fairly confident the ruins date to the latter half of the 8th century, but how long they'll survive is uncertain. The island sits on a bed of permafrost, which has been slowly melting over the past century as temperatures rise. The lake level is rising, and the island will eventually be swallowed up. Two earthquakes have also struck the island as well. One of them likely happened during construction in the 8th century, and there is evidence of another catastrophic tremor sometime after the island was abandoned. Poor Bajin is one of the most mysterious archaeological monuments in Russia. It's situated far away from the known trade routes, far away from big settlements, a solitary place that looks like a model of a Chinese city palace, but in Russia and close to the Mongolian border. The Russian president Vladimir Putin visited the site in 2007 and said, I have been to many places, I have seen many things, but I have never seen anything of the kind. And on this, I don't think I can argue with him. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.